Hello, I'm State Representative Terry Johnson from the 90th House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Mike Ditto. Today we have with us State Representative Terry Johnson, who serves the 90th House District, which includes Adams and Scioto counties and parts of Lawrence County in Southern Ohio. Representative, thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, good morning, Mike. So you've been here for one full term now. You're on your second term in the Ohio House, slightly different district this time around. You had probably one of the biggest successes in the last General Assembly with a very, very important bill that has greatly affected not only your district, but the entire state of Ohio, House Bill 93. Maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about the bill and what it did and what it's uh, meant to your district over the last two years since it was passed. Yeah, yeah Mike, House Bill 93 uh, was the anti-prescription drug abuse bill. Uh, I partnered with Dave Burke, a registered pharmacist. I was a working doctor uh, with an intricate uh, knowledge of, of what the problem was. And we wrote a bill that essentially knocked down the pill mills uh, in Southern Ohio. And uh, it's a tool that's being used all over the state now uh, to knock out other pill mills. Uh, pill mills uh, were primarily designed for profit, uh, to pump out opioids like Vicodin and Oxycontin and Percocet uh, in great numbers. Uh, and those, those pills addicted large numbers of people uh, in our state, causing a great deal of misery and pain and, and a lot of the social ills we have today. Uh, I see it as a victory, though, for state government. Uh, this was a partnership that started at a grassroots level mm -hmm. uh, down in Scioto County in Portsmouth, Ohio, uh, spread all the way to the Capitol uh, through the health department and various branches of government. And, uh, you know, we came together, uh, passed that unanimously through the House, through the Senate, signed by the governor in five months. It's an example of what we can do when we have good policy and a good purpose. What was it like being here uh, to see that bill passed, given your background, not only as a doctor, but in other elected office uh, prior to your coming to the House? Well, I was the county coroner, and uh, I had the, the um, you know, unfortunate task of documenting what was killing people in my county. Uh, there was a group uh, that, that formed back at that time called SOLAS, Surviving Our Loss and, uh, and Continuing Every Day. Uh, that was mothers and, and relatives that had lost victims. Well, those victims were my cases and the faces that uh, they put on posters and, and tried to bring attention to the, to the problem uh, were people that, that, that I had to go and view and, 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 and do the, do the uh, uh, hard work on. And so it was very personal to me. And plus it was happening, uh, you know, in, in, in my home county where I grew up. Uh, it was a big deal. Uh, but, you know, we knocked those pill mills out. Now large numbers of people are no longer being addicted. The problem we have now is we have an awful lot of people who have been addicted and we have to figure out a way to take care of them. Uh, that also intersects with another problem we have in Southern Ohio. Uh, the Robert Wood Johnson uh, uh, Foundation does a set of numbers to help counties in Ohio and other states uh, see where they are uh, mm -hmm. with the health of their community. Uh, Scioto County unfortunately ranks the lowest uh, in the entire state. And Ohio's not that healthy a state compared to other states, so we're the lowest of, uh, of a mediocre state when it comes to health. As a physician, that causes uh, great pain for me. Uh, I want us to have a healthy state. I want us to have a healthy community in southern Ohio. And if you're a business looking to locate uh, you know, a, a plant or bring jobs, and you're looking on the internet and you see things like drugs and bad health, you may not want to bring your business to southern Ohio. So. Sure. Rather than ignore the problem, I want to grab it, take hold of it, take ownership, responsibility, inspire people to solve the problem, and uh, move out on that. Why has Scioto County been sort of disproportionately affected by this problem over the years versus areas maybe in northern Ohio, which really haven't seen quite the, the, the breadth of the problem that southern Ohio has? Well, the other parts of the states are, state are catching up now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so what we saw four or five years ago in Scioto County has spread to other places. Uh, you know, they've had to deal with this. And now uh, that the, the prescription drugs are not so readily available, 
uh, heroin has come in to take their place. It's cheap, it's plentiful, uh, it's brought in by Mexican drug cartels, uh, and uh, this is a very insidious problem, uh, but it's a separate problem, but it was created by uh, this uh, uh, prescription drug abuse problem. Uh, in southern Ohio, we've had chronic economic recession for many, many, many decades, mm -hmm. four or five, maybe even six decades of economic decline. Uh, I'm tired of that also. Sure. Uh, I'm inspiring folks to uh, solve our own problems, bring industry, bring growth, and, uh, and just look for a new day. I can't stand to hear no uh, when it comes to uh, making things better. Uh, so it's a new day and people are stepping up and the same attitude and the same spirit with which our grassroots movement attacked the drug problem, they're also attacking the health problem. And they're also looking to bring industry. Uh, we got people up here for the first time in decades shopping our local community uh, for industry and for growth. What's it been like as far as uh, your time in the house seeing that sort of job growth start to increase a little bit because as you said your area has been uh, previously for many decades been plagued by uh, unemployment so uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about what's been done in, during your time in the house to sort of get out of that spiral of unemployment and, and what are the things you might be working on this General Assembly. What I really find is people hunger for leadership whether it's uh, in a Boy Scout troop mm -hmm. uh, you know or it's a church or uh, you know at uh, uh, Rotary Kiwanis, people are waiting for someone to stand up and say, let's move out in this direction because this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It seems like folks have just been sort of in, you know, like it's like the Wizard of Oz where they get to the poppy field. Right. You know? <laughs> right. uh, Southern Ohio kind of hit that poppy field, sure. you know, and we're reversing that. Uh, we're coming out of a fog uh, and all, all people are looking for are folks to stand up, be courageous and make decisions for the right reason. And we're seeing a lot of that now. Uh, you know, I certainly try to do that. I've got a military background. Uh, I move out on missions. Uh, you know, uh, there's no room uh, for, for ego uh, when you're trying to fix something. Oh, sure. I'm happy to share credit with anybody who wants to take credit for anything, <laughs> anything that happens. <laughs> you know, I'm not, what I'm interested in are results. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when people need to be inspired, I do my best to do that. When people need to be led, I try my best to stand up and, and, and put people in the right places at the right times and enable them to do what uh, you know, God enables them to do. Uh, everybody has the ability to be a leader. They just need some inspiration sometimes. You've talked quite a bit during your service here about sort of uh, freedom and independence and, and self-reliance with, with some help when it is needed. What's your district like when it compares to, to others across the state as far as that topic is concerned? Well, you know, people will think this is idle boast or, you know, just uh, I mean, home, home field, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, bias. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> I, have, I have the finest people in the world living in southern Ohio and northern Kentucky. These folks, if, if I had, if someone said, Terry, we're going to put you out on a desert island, pick a group of people to take with you. I would hands down pick my folks. Uh, these are the folks that, that originally settled uh, northern Kentucky, southern Ohio uh, after the Revolutionary War. These were our Revolutionary War heroes that moved into this area. They are largely the same folks. Uh, you know, they are re resilient. Uh, they are industrious. Uh, they have a skill base second to none. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to find people that can build things, fix things, they're in southern Ohio. Uh, they also have a strong streak of independence, uh, which is very American. Uh, they love their freedoms, they love their liberties, and uh, you know uh, they are strong for Second Amendment. Uh, mm -hmm. They have good mm -hmm. values. Uh, you come down to Southern Ohio, uh, go up a hollow, you can't throw a rock if you're hitting a church. Uh, you know they have good, strong, rock-solid American values. I love those folks, and uh, they're ready to do something. You've been here for uh, a little over uh, two years now. You're in your second term, and uh, in this General Assembly, there's no secret that uh, there's been a lot of talk about jobs, the economy, uh, and your, your colleagues share that same sentiment on sure. both sides of the aisle. How have you been able to learn from your colleagues, uh, not only on the other side of the aisle, but from other geographic regions of the state, and, and how do your districts compare in any way? Is there, is there a lot that you've been able to learn over the last two plus years? Uh, yeah, I'm learning all the time. Uh, you know, coming up here and being a state legislator, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what do you do to prepare yourself for that? Sure. You know, I'm a physician. I'm the only physician in the legislature, mm -hmm. the only physician that's been here for many, many, many decades. And before whoever that guy was, it was the last uh, doc, I think it was way back in the 1800s. I'm not a lawyer. 
Uh, I'm not really a you know a business person. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just a person who cares deeply about my about my region. I've got some leadership background, uh, you know, because I spent 21 years in the military and held various commands and staff positions and learned a great deal, uh, you know, in, in that role. Uh, also served overseas, uh, but my colleagues, each and every one of them teach me something on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. uh, I am always listening to them. I'm always learning from them. And some of the things they teach you, you don't want to do. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure. Uh, but you, you, you keep your eyes open to learn all those lessons. Geographically, uh, Southern Ohio looks like Northern Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you go over towards Cincinnati, it starts to change gradually. As you move up the river, up to Youngstown, it changes a, a little bit less gradually, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and goes into to Western Pennsylvania. Sure. Uh, you know, and, and, and a lot of West Virginia influence down there too. Uh, along that mighty Ohio River uh, rests an Appalachian populace uh, that is very similar in many ways and starts to shade off and become different. Speaking of leadership, uh, you're actually in a leadership capacity in this General Assembly uh, in one of your committees and you actually serve on a few others. Uh, maybe you could tell your constituents back home in your district about what committees you serve on and uh, what you're working on in uh, the, the committee which you chair. As a, as a person who is still uh, working actively in my community at home, mm -hmm. as a physician, my time is very valuable. Uh, what I did not want to do and what I told folks from the very beginning was uh, I did not want to come up and disappear into Columbus mm -hmm. and never to be seen again except uh, campaign functions. That's right. Uh, so I'm mostly at home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, as I was a citizen soldier in the, in the Guard, I consider myself a citizen legislator. Mm -hmm. And so I want to come up and be very efficient with my time. Uh, so I serve on committees uh, that, that mean a great deal to me and that I can have maximum impact on. Mm -hmm. One's a transportation committee, so I'm a member of the transportation committee. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, Ohio and Southern Ohio in particular having river and having rail and road. Right. Well, the road part's not quite there, and we have a mm -hmm. huge project that we're uh, working on down in Southern Ohio right, right. now. $600 million project uh, that I would like to name after a, a, a veteran's memorial that we're also trying to build, mm -hmm. uh, if we can figure out how to build it in a way that's acceptable to everybody. Uh, so we're working hard on that because we need that shot of, uh, of, uh, uh, sure. of, of jobs and, and resources coming into our mm -hmm. area. Uh, that would complete the trifecta, uh, <laughs> road, rail, and river. Um, so the transportation committee is very important. I'm also on the health committee mm -hmm. and uh, that's a natural place for a doctor sure, to be. Of course. And uh, as you might imagine, my colleagues uh, often uh, will ask me uh, the particulars of a health matter. Uh, you know, and, and that is an area that I have great expertise on, naturally. I've been a physician for over 21 years now. Right. And I've uh, been a family practitioner in academic medicine and uh, also done military medicine, aerospace medicine. So, and I'm a, a clinical associate professor at Ohio University Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine. I'm an osteopathic physician. So I bring a perspective to that. Um, uh, but the thing I'm most proud of is I'm the chair of the Veterans Committee. Uh, half of last uh, session I was the chair, before that I was the vice chair, and uh, you know, uh, uh, I was uh, very honored to be able to continue that this time. Uh, veterans uh, have a very special place in my heart, veterans' families in particular. Uh, as a former wartime commander, uh, I, I have a unique perspective on what our veterans do, who they are, and interestingly, uh, when I was growing up, uh, I was aware of the veterans in my community. Mm -hmm. uh, I practically worshiped our World War II guys, our Korean guys. My dad was a Korean War veteran. Those are the guys that brought me up, taught me how to be, taught me what I should know, taught me how I should conduct myself. Um, and uh, they had a profound influence on my life and on the lives of other people in Southern Ohio. Of course. We love our military in Southern Ohio. That's a very good thing. And part of the uh discussion that you and I have had uh, the, prior to the show was that uh, you're actually introducing uh, a resolution with Speaker Batchelder uh, that aims to uh, push the federal government to assist those veterans that you hold so dear. Tell us a little bit about that.